In this video, I will show you two ways on how you can create the Orton effect in Luminar Neo. Now, there are many different tools and techniques on how you can enhance your photos. However, only few of them became as popular as the Orton effect. The Orton effect adds extra bit of glow and also that dreamy look that is both hated and loved, yet used by many photographers. So if you want to try it on your own images, today is your day as I'm going to show you how to do that in Luminar Neo right now. Now, before we're going to start with the edit, let me tell you a little bit more about the Orton effect. The Orton effect is a post-processing technique created by Michael Orton in 1980s. It is still popular among landscape photographers today, and although the technique has undergone some changes, the primary concept has remained the same to produce a dreamy glow in an image. The Orton effect was originally created by Michael Orton as a way to imitate watercolor paintings. At that time, it was done by stacking two or three transparencies of the same composition to create this look. Nowadays, it's much easier to achieve this effect using software such as Adobe Photoshop or Luminar Neo. And although there are several ways to achieve this effect, most of them will lead to the same results. Okay, now moving into Luminar Neo, and the catalog module, where we're gonna start by looking at our sample files. Now, as always, if you wanna follow me along and do the edit on your own computer, all you need to do is to click on the link in the description of this video and download the sample files now. Once you have them ready, add them into Luminar Neo and we can start. Now we have two images for two techniques. So the first one we're gonna use is the image with the autumn forest. So click on it, select it, and then move it into edit module. Now for the first technique, we're gonna use the built-in Orton effect that is already part of the Luminar Neo. Now to do that, we need to go into our main editing toolbar and move into the creative section. Here in the creative section, you will see a tool called Glow. So let's go into the Glow, click on it and open it. And once you open it, you will see a number of sliders. But to start with, we're going to be focusing on the gray drop-down box. So click on it and open it. And here, select the Orton effect. Once you do that, we have that set. And we can start by increasing the amount slider. So take it and actually bring it quite up, I would say somewhere around 50, and see what it does to your image. Now, although we're getting that kind of dreamy look, the whole thing look a little bit too bright. Now we can adjust that by moving into the advanced settings. If you don't see this part, you maybe have to click on it. So it's kind of collapsed like this, and once you click on the little arrow or the text, it will open. Here, you're going to see four different sliders, which will help us to adjust the softness, brightness, contrast, and warmth. So first come first, I already mentioned the picture look a little bit too bright. So let's go ahead and use the brightness slider, bring it down and uh, make it a little bit less bright. So I think maybe somewhere around minus 70 already looks much better. If you do prefer a little bit more softness, of course, then we can use the softness slider, bring it up to, let's say somewhere around 50 and add a little bit of extra softness like this. After that, we have two more sliders. Now I quite like to use the contrast and what I usually do, I increase it. Let's say to somewhere around 30, but it really is up to you. If you want, you can also try the other way around where the image gets a little bit of a kind of fade and it loses the overall contrast. It becomes a little bit more flat. So for me, I prefer to go the other way around. Um, let's say somewhere around 30. Finally, we have the warm slider, and this is, of course, where we can adjust the overall warmth of the look. So we can make it much cooler by going more towards the left, or we can make it much warmer by going towards the right. 
Just like always, with any of the sliders in Luminar Neo, you can just double click on them and they will reset. For me, I think the default zero is good. So once I have all of this set, I can then come back to the amount and play around with that to see how much of that effect I like. I think for this image, around 40 looks good. So now if I would be happy with the result, I would just close the glow tool and continue with the edit. But before we're going to leave, I want to show you how we can use the power of masking to be able to apply the effect only to specific parts of your image. Well, as you can see right now, it's applied everywhere and that works. However, maybe sometimes you will only want to apply it to the specific parts. Like in this case, we could apply it only to the brighter parts. Now to do that, we need to switch from adjustments into the masking and choose our tool. For this image, we're going to use the brush. And here we have an option between the paint and erase. With the paint, we're going to paint that effect to the specific part of the image. And with the erase, if we would switch there, we would remove the effect from that specific part of the image. So we want to only apply it to specific part. So we're going to select the paint. Then we're going to adjust our brush. We're going to increase the size. We're going to keep the softness on 100. And with the strength, let's go to 60. After that, we can move on our image. And while you're there, you can use the bracket keys on your keyboard to adjust the size there. So let's go ahead and make one click. And the moment we do that, the effect will disappear from the entire image and it will only start to appear in that areas where we're going to brush. So let me show you. So we're going to brush over the forest here. So the brighter areas here. And then we also going to brush over the trees here to make it almost look like it's the glow coming through the leaves. So let's have a look at that. That looks good. What we can do, we can adjust the size of the brush and let's say also brush over the area here and maybe also over the leaves and the little bushes here. So here and then on the side and just like that, I think that looks quite good. Now, if you want to see the mask, you can click on the little arrow before the brush. Here, go into the mask actions and click on show. By doing that, you will see a red overlay that will appear on your image and that will help you to find out wherever that effect and that specific mask is applied. So just like that, we have applied the Orton effect only to the specific parts of our image. Now, before we're going to continue, I wanted to remind you that this tutorial is powered by our Luminar Neo Photo Manipulation Masterclass. This amazing course is designed to help you to unlock your creativity and boost your photo editing skills in Luminar Neo. With 15 fun and exciting projects and over 6 hours of high quality videos, you're going to love it. So if you're interested in learning more, head over to our website cleverphotographer.com and to get the best possible price, make sure that you follow the link in the description of this video. Now, as you can see, we are back in the catalog module where we're going to select the second image and use it for the second technique. Once we have it selected, let's move it into edit module where we're going to start in layers panel. Because the first thing we need to do is to duplicate the original layer. To do that, right click on the layer and select duplicate layer. Before you do anything else, make sure that you have the top layer selected and you can see it by the blue frame around it. After that, we're going to turn our attention towards the main editing toolbar where we're going to go into the creative section and here we're going to look for the blur tool. So let's click on it to open it, make it all nice and visible. And first thing we need to do is to select the Gaussian blur. Once we have it selected, we need to enter the amount. Now there is a rule of thumb following the megapixels in your camera. So if your camera has 24 megapixels, you would add 24. However, I really believe that you should try and see what works for you rather than following this rule. But you can start with that. 
generally for me, anywhere between 20 and 70 can work quite well. So for this image, let's go to 30. And once we have pivoted, we can now close the blur tool. After this, we're going to go all the way to the bottom into the professional section where we're going to use the super contrast tool. And specifically, we're going to be focusing on the highlights contrast and midtones contrast. So let's start with the highlights. Uh, let's go up. I think generally somewhere around maybe 15 or 16 can work quite well and then move into the midtones contrast and again, push it. Not too much on this one, maybe just somewhere around eight. So add contrast into the highlights and midtones. Once we're done with that, again, we can close the tool and we are done with the adjusting. So now we need to do something to get our image back. Now to do that, one more time, make sure that you have the new layer selected and then go into the layer properties where you need to change the blend mode by clicking on this little gray drop down box and change it from normal into the soft light. Now you can see that the effect has been applied to the image, but it's a little bit too strong. So to adjust it, it's really easy. We're going to use the opacity slider. So let's go ahead and bring it from 100 uh, down. So let's say somewhere around 30, 40, depend what works for you and what you prefer. I think for me, 35 looks good. Now, once you're happy with the opacity, there are two more adjustments you can make. One of them is to add more glow. As I mentioned earlier, you can adjust the glow with the blur tool. So for this, what we're going to do, we're going to go to the top and we're going to switch from tools into the edits. Here, you're going to see two tools, the super contrast and blur. So let's open the blur tool and let's go back to our amount slider where we're going to take the slider and bring it up. And when you keep an eye on your image, you will see more and more blur appearing. Now, again, it depends on the image and your preference. For me, I will go back to that 30, 35, but I just want you to know that this is where you adjust the blur. Of course, that you can also adjust the contrast. If you think it's a little bit too strong, you can bring it up, add more or remove it. And same for the highlights right here. Finally, when we close the super contrast, we can then return into the tools, again, open the layer properties. And just like with the first technique, we can use the masking to apply the effect only to the specific part of your image. So for me, what I would like to do is to apply the Orton effect only to the village and the water. So for this, let's choose one of the tools here. Let's go ahead and choose the brush. Again, stay on paint have a nice big brush, softness on 100 and strength, let's go for 80. After that, again, when we start to brush, the effect will disappear from the entire image and it will only start to appear on the areas where we're going to brush. As you can see, when I brush over, you also see the red overlay, which indicates the area of the mask. Once you have pivoted, just let go and let's have a look at it. You can see that the Orton effect is only visible on the village and on the sea. After this, again, we can close the layer properties and we are done. From here, you could switch back to the original layer, continue with the edit or export it and share it with the rest of the world. And that's it for today. If you have any questions about today's tutorial or Luminar Neo in overall, then make sure that you write them in the comment section under this video. If you did enjoy today's tutorial, then please go ahead and like and share it. And also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our future content. For today, thank you very much for watching and I already can't wait to see you in the next video.